As we have discussed many times on this channel, there are many reasons for the fall of the Roman Empire. There is not one single big reason. And one of those reasons is sometimes said to be that the late Roman army was weak, undisciplined and ineffective. That the late Romans were only inferior, degenerate versions of the glory days when the legions were a very disciplined, formidable fighting force. That the late Roman army was but a mere shadow of its former self. That the late Roman army was inferior in fighting skill, in equipment and through and through barbarized. And thus that it was absolutely no wonder that the Western Roman Empire fell in the 5th century, since how could such a pitiful army defend so vast an empire against so many barbarian invaders? Well, friends of late Roman history, I hope I can convince you in this video that all these accusations against the late Roman army could not be further from the truth. When we imagine the Roman army, we quite certainly will imagine the Roman legions, the formidable, disciplined multitudes of well-equipped Romans who marched in closed battle formations, conquering the barbarian nations one by one, none being able to withstand this incredible amount of discipline and superior equipment. With the reforms of Gaius Marius in 107 BC, so in the era of the late Roman Republic, the legions, as we normally know them, became established. These are the legions how they are normally depicted in movies and how therefore the broad mass of people knows the typical Roman soldier. A typical Roman legionary wore a Galea helmet, then a rectangular shield, the scutum, the sword in use was the gladius, then the famous segmented armor, the lorica segmentata, and a pilum was used as a spear which could also be thrown. This is how regular people normally imagine a Roman legionary and accordingly the Roman legions. And many movies wrongfully depict the legions as being the same, even in the late Roman Empire. Indeed, during the early to mid Empire, this is how the Roman legionary typically looked. The Roman legions were fighting units of around 5000 to 6000 men, divided into smaller subunits, commanded by the famous Centuriones. There were around 25 legions during the early to mid Roman Empire and an equal number of auxiliary troops who did not have the Roman citizenship. This was only granted to the legions. Thus, the army totaled about 500,000 men. And fascinatingly, even until the late 4th century, this number would stay about the same. But in 211 AD, the Emperor Caracalla granted the Roman citizenship to all free men of the empire. Thus, the distinction between legions and auxiliaries became void. Not long later, chaos descended onto the Roman Empire. And during the crisis of the 3rd century, the empire was faced with a multitude of disasters. Plagues, barbarian invasions, usurpers left and right, a fracturing of the empire into three different empires and extremely short reigns of emperors which all destabilized the Imperium Romanum. In those days, it became necessary to reform the classic Roman legions in order to make the legions more flexible and better adapted to the need of the times. Thus, the Comitatenses and Limitanei were established. Instead of the classical legions and auxiliaries, now there was the mobile field army, the Comitatenses, and the border troops, quite often recruited from local people, the Limitanei. During those days, cavalry units became more important. The equipment of the typical Roman soldier would also change. Gun was the Lorica Segmentata, it was far too cumbersome and difficult to maintain and repair. The Lorica Hamata and Scamata was now standard equipment. The last Lorica Segmentatas were used around 250 AD. Gun was also the Scutum, it gave way to an oval shield. The Gladius was replaced by a longer sword, the Spata. The shape of the helmet also changed and the pilum was replaced by the spiculum, which was longer and functioned more like a regular spear. Thus it was the crisis of the 3rd century that would change not only how the Roman army was organized, but also what equipment was used as compared to the earlier empire. So then it is quite clear, right? The crisis of the 3rd century caused a massive drop in equipment quality and most likely the discipline also deteriorated. Combine that with more and more barbarian troops which were started to be recruited and you got yourself the explanation for why the Western Roman Empire fell. 
not so fast friends of late Roman history, because believe it or not, but these late Roman field armies were in fact a formidable fighting force. But before we get to that, if you want to support this channel but you think that a Patreon or YouTube membership doesn't give you enough benefits, then please support this channel by using Atlas VPN. You can get a huge discount by using Atlas VPN with the following special Majorianus link, which you can also find in the description. Not only do you thus support the channel, but you also get 3 years of Atlas VPN for just $1.99 per month and you have a 30 day money back guarantee. We all know that not using a VPN is not advisable these days and I personally also use Atlas VPN. It has a super intuitive user interface, is extremely fast and even has more advanced features such as a kill switch. You can watch Netflix with content from other countries, you can keep Google searches private so that you are not spammed with unwanted ads, you can save money while shopping online in other regions, you can even use Atlas VPN on an unlimited number of devices and you are even protected from malware and malicious links. It doesn't get any better than that. You have an excellent deal with the best VPN service and are even supporting this channel here. But this is a limited time offer so don't hesitate too long. Julius Valerius Majorianus himself would be proud and I'm sure that he would have used Atlas VPN had it existed back then. Click on the Majorianus link in the description to get the special discount. Thanks friends of late Roman history and gratias Tibiago. Now you might say, how could the late Roman army be a formidable fighting force when the Western Roman Empire fell? Isn't that proof that the late legions were inferior to the earlier legions? Well, let us not forget that the early Roman legions also suffered incredible military defeats. For instance, the giant disasters against Hannibal, where hundreds of thousands of Roman soldiers died in the Punic Wars. Or the disastrous defeat of the Roman legions under Varus at the Battle of Teutoburg Forest. Or the many legionaries that perished in the Marcomannic Wars. But now you will say, okay, but certainly these legions were superior to the degenerate late Roman army. Well, friends of late Roman history, it is exactly these changes to the early imperial legions that saved the Roman Empire from certain doom during the crisis of the 3rd century. These new comitatensis field units were much faster to deploy and more flexible and thus could Gallienus defeat the Alemanni, thus could Claudius Goticus defeat the Goths. Thus could someone like Maximinus Trax venture deep into Germania and defeat the barbarians at the Battle of Harzhorn. Thus could someone like Aurelian be able to vanquish the Alemanni, the Goths and the Utungi. And thus could someone like Probus be able to defeat the Vandals and the Burgundians. By the later 3rd century, the Roman legionary already had transformed and yet the Empire won giant victories. The fall of Rome had been averted exactly because of the comitatensis and limitane system, exactly because cavalry was now made more important, exactly because the equipment was easier to maintain. And later then, in the 4th century, the victories continued. Emperor Flavius Julianus, the legendary Julian himself, won major victories against the invading Germanic tribes in the 350s, thus prolonging the life of the Western Empire by many more decades. Then the legendary Flavius Stilico won some gigantic victories in the early 400s, defeating invading armies of the Goths and Alemanni multiple times, and even defeating Alaric and his Visigoths on numerous occasions. Stilico even entered Rome together with the Emperor Honorius in 403 AD in a triumph, being celebrated like a second Trajan, due to his incredible victories against the Germanic invaders. And even 50 years later, Flavius Aetius managed to defeat the Huns at the Battle of the Catalonian Plains, which was an absolutely insane victory for a dying empire. And then even 10 years later, Julius Valerius Majorianus himself was able to almost restore the Western Roman Empire in the short time span of only 4 years. So if the Romans time and time again won major victories against the barbarians, why then does the late Roman army have such a bad reputation? Well, mostly because the Western Empire fell and this is often blamed on the late Roman army. But as we saw, this is unfair, since they often won incredible victories. The Western Empire fell because of a very unfortunate chain of events that cascaded out of control. 
In 378 AD, the Eastern Roman Emperor Valens lost against the Goths, not because the Comitatenses he used were inferior, no, but because he himself made some grave tactical mistakes. As with the legions of old, the Comitatenses were only as good as their commander. A good commander, like Stilico or Majorian, won major victories. A bad one, like Valens, caused major defeats. The Battle of Adrianople was bad, but the real disaster happened later, in 394 AD. Here, a large part of the Western Roman Comitatensis legions was destroyed in the Battle of the Frigidus River. This was a civil war where the Western Roman Empire fought against the Eastern Roman Empire. The commanders of the West made some tactical mistakes and thus many of the Western Roman Comitatenses soldiers were killed and their ranks never replenished. It was thus that Stilico had to withdraw many troops from the Rhine frontier in order to save Italy from repeated incursions by the Goths and Alemanni. And saving Italy he did time and time again winning the last major victory against Radagaius' Goths in 406. But because the Western legions were stretched thin after the disaster of the Frigidus River, now the Germanic invaders could overrun the border defenses and pour into Gaul, since the Limitanei of the Rhine frontier had been moved to Italy by Stilico. And then new usurpers sprung up, such as Constantine III from Britain, who was defeated by Constantius III, but this clash again destroyed many Western Roman troops. And this was a constant occurrence, new usurpers here and there, then also Bacchaudai rebels, and thus the Western Roman field armies paradoxically dissolved themselves without actually even losing often against the barbarians. They mostly destroyed themselves while battling against each other. And as the provinces had become partly occupied by Germanic invaders, the state revenue consequently fell, and new high-quality comitatensis units could not be recruited anymore in large numbers. Until in the end, only barbarian mercenaries could be recruited, which would sometimes fight for Rome, but they were of course often not quite as loyal as the comitatensis legions. Thus we see that the late Roman army was not as bad as the reputation it gets. In fact, the late Roman army won many victories against the Germanic invaders and it dissolved much more because of constant civil wars and usurpers fighting against the emperor or against other usurpers. And not because the late Roman army was incapable of winning against the barbarians. I personally think that had the forces of the West not been utterly decimated at the Battle of the Frigidus River in 394 AD and had Stilico not been murdered, I think that in that case the Western Roman Empire would not have fallen. I will make a video about that alternate timeline. So I hope I could convince you that the late Roman army was not weak and ineffective. In fact, the opposite was true. And the late Roman legions do deserve the same respect as the early ones. And please like this video and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And I would like to thank each and everyone who is supporting this channel in any form, be it via Patreon or YouTube membership. Thanks friends for your support. And of course I'd be happy if you would support this channel either via Patreon or YouTube membership or of course by using the Majorianus Atlas VPN link which I have posted in the description. That way you can get an incredibly cheap VPN deal and at the same time support this channel. And if you are interested in learning more about how the Roman border defenses were overrun after 406 AD, you can watch this video here in the upper right corner. But if you are more interested in learning about the fall of the West, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history, gratias Tibiago and bene valetet.